F1 2021 may be the first Codemasters F1 game to feature on next generation consoles, but you'd be wrong to expect a complete revolution over the previous F1 games. F1 2021 has been built on the same game engine that's been used since F1 2015, so any radical new features that people have been asking for, such as VR, were never going to see the light of day in this game. In short, your opinion of F1 2021 will depend largely on your view of the previous F1 game, but also how keen you are to see a fully-fledged story mode. And if you're excited to get your hands on F1 2021, then be sure to let us know down in the comments. Breaking Point has been the heavily marketed new game mode, and one that people have been eagerly anticipating ever since the idea was teased in F1 2019. The CG cutscenes look fantastic, and for the most part, the writing and voice acting is great. It's not extraordinary in any sense, and many other games tell a much more captivating plot, but it would be unreasonable to expect F1 2021's story to be much better than anything we'd ever seen in a video game to date. Gameplay and cutscenes combined, it would take about 8 hours to complete, and it's very clearly meant to be an introduction into F1 2021, particularly for newcomers to the F1 game, since there's few customizable options, and players who run with Ultimate AI will have no trouble at all going through breaking point, even in the highest of 3 difficulty levels. You start in the 2019 Formula 2 season and carry on until the end of the 2021 Formula 1 season, taking part in 17 races during that time. Some of them are like the scenario seen in the scenario mode in F1 games of old, so for example you have to catch up to your teammate within a certain lap or recover positions lost after pitting to a place of punctured tyre. That scenario in particular demonstrates the greatly improved realism in the way the tyres look and react once they've been punctured and start to fall apart. Outside the breaking point, there are a number of other improvements and additions, such as the much requested online two-player career mode, which has all the complexities of a single-player career. Also, split-screen multiplayer has survived the transition from F1 2020 to 2021 for those who want a more casual and offline multiplayer experience. Career mode has had a bit of a makeover too, noticeable immediately after starting as you're given a sweeping shot of your team's headquarters before being interviewed by Will Buxton. Also, there's a couple of new customization options, one visual and one audio edition. Stickers can be added to the halo of your My Team and Multiplayer car, which opens up a new area of personalization. The other new feature are victory radio calls, which play when you win a race. That was on fire! It's not only presentation changes, since before you even start a career there's a range of new options that allow you to change cash, resource points and a claim earning rates for both the player and the AI. So you can either make the game much easier or give yourself a disadvantage. If you have the deluxe edition, you can even choose to add 7 classic F1 drivers into the driver market. Michael Schumacher, Ayrton Senna and Alain Prost all return having featured in either F1 2019 or 2020. And Jensen Button, Nico Rosberg, David Coulthard and Felipe Massa are the other icons in the game. If you want a more realistic experience, they can be turned off before you start your career and even if they are enabled, you as the player are the only one that can ever sign them as the 10 real teams won't ever pick them up. Department events are an entirely new feature in career mode and they will crop up randomly during a playthrough in between races. They're scenarios which have two possible outcomes with different consequences. Sometimes it's a choice between which positive outcome you prefer or which of two negative outcomes you can most stomach. Or you're presented with two options, both with pros and cons and you have to pick which option is best for your team. It's not a revolutionary new feature by any means, but one that adds some extra depth to the career mode. The replay system has had a whole raft of changes, with the addition of a position tower graphic, as well as a lap counter and replay graphic, all of which can be turned off. The automatically generated race highlights now have transitions that tell you what lap a piece of action occurred, and if you're on PC, you can save and store complete race replays instead of just the highlights. It's also worth keeping in mind that, whilst they're not in the game yet, the 2021 Formula 2 cars will join the 2020 season in a free update in the future, 
and Imola, Algov and Jeda will all be added to the game for free at a later date. If you get F1 2021 on next gen consoles then you'll get a multitude of benefits over players on the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Those include reduced loading times, ray tracing and PlayStation 5 players will also get the benefit of the DualSense's adaptive triggers. But even if you play on next gen consoles you'll still be playing a game that feels very similar to Codemasters previous gen efforts albeit with a number of graphical and quality of life improvements. On paper the damage model has been reworked with extra parts of the car that can be damaged but it's not as big of a change as many would hope. The rear wing is one of the new components that can be damaged and affect the way your car handles but it's still some way behind the damage model seen in previous games even if you ignore the PC F1 games of old. F1 2021's cars are still far more robust than in the PlayStation 3 exclusive F1 Championship Edition based on the 2006 season. In that game the rear wings come off quite easily if you go into a barrier and that's if you go into one in a high speed backwards crash or if you reverse and bump into the barriers. Rear wings do not take much to come away from your car in F1 Championship Edition but in F1 2021 if you mimic those same crashes the rear wing doesn't come away it does sustain performance enhancing damage but that's about it. Even Formula 1 2003 on the PS2 had less rigid rear wings as they could randomly fall off mid-race from an AI driver's car. Rear wings aren't the only new area of the car that can take damage in F1 2021 with other new areas including the side pods and the diffusers and if you take damage to those areas you will certainly notice it when you're driving but it's not a revolutionary new damage model and it's quite likely that if you damage your underbody or side pods you'll break off a bit of your front wing anyway. Going back to breaking point, whilst many of the events are races with a particular set of circumstances and a hurdle for you to overcome, some of them are just normal run of the mill 25% distance races with no real gimmick to them. Also there's no branching story paths and outside of the team selection where you can choose to race for Alpha Tauri, Racing Point slash Aston Martin, Alpha Romeo, Haas or Williams, there's no meaningful choices for players to make. There are interview segments and how you respond to the questions will affect the tone of the emails you get in your in-game email but that's about it. These are all minor complaints though and ones that aren't unexpected and for people who want to play through a fictional plot in an F1 game these are issues you can mostly overlook. What's harder to excuse are the number of omissions in content that F1 2021 has, at the very least for now. Classic cars, short layouts of the circus and the championships mode have all been cut out. Also whilst you get to drive 2019 Formula 2 cars and 2020 F1 cars in breaking point, you can't use those cars outside of that game mode. In the current version of the game as well, neither the circuit to Catalonia in Spain or Albert Park in Australia have received the updates to their layouts which have been made in real life for this season although that could change in a later version of F1 2021. What's very telling is that despite F1 2021 being the first F1 game to be released on next gen consoles, it still feels a lot like the previous entries in the series and understandably so but to go back to the point made at the start of the video, your opinion of F1 2021 will largely depend on your opinion of F1 2020 and what your personal take is on the content that was removed, such as the classic cars and short circuits. There is also the factor of the change in pricing in many countries as EA's takeover of Codemasters means F1 2021 is more expensive than F1 2020 was when it was new and that's in accordance with EA's usual pricing strategy. Putting that to one side though, breaking point will be a key deciding factor for many. A story driven mode has had a lot of demand from the community ever since F1 2019 teased the idea of a character and plot driven experience. Breaking point is certainly not bad especially for a first attempt in an F1 game and if the idea of it appeals to you then you'll love F1 2021. If not then there's 2 player career mode, improvements to race replays and icons for those with the deluxe edition but if none of that is of interest to you but classic cars, short circuits and the championships mode were, then essentially F1 2021 is last year's game but with slightly less content that you'll want.
What's your view on F1 2021 though? Are you excited to play through Breaking Point or do you wish the F1 game stayed well away from narrative driven game modes? Let us know your thoughts down in the comments and don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel.